Hello there. Kyle Katarn here, and it is Wednesday, my droids. Let's read some comics. What's up, Dr. Holocron? Looks like it's you and me today, man. Um, great issues this week. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. I'm really excited for this. Um, not only do we have Star Wars number 25 by Charles Soule, which is his 100th Star Wars comic. Woo! That's something worth celebrating right there. Um, we've also got Darth Vader issue number 25, and Han Solo and Chewbacca number 4. I've been enjoying Han Solo and Chewbacca more than I thought I would, um, but we'll get to that when we get to it. First, Star Wars 25. This is an awesome cover. It's very epic straight away. We've got a little bit of everything in here. From like, uh, Jake, hello there. We've got three comics total, but it looks like this is going to be a collection of stories just based on all of these different time periods I see before me here. We've got Quizzy, we've got Obi-Wan and Anakin, Vader... Seventh Sister, Kylo, Poe. Oh, awesome. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, cool. It's going to be four different stories. All written by Charles Soule. Each with a different artist. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Obi-Wan and Anakin. The Lesson. By Charles Soule and Ramon Rosanas. Oh, awesome. Okay, cool. Darth Vader. The Lesson. Charles Soule and Giuseppe Camincoli. What? Ah, uh, he's getting all the dream teams back together. Kylo Ren, see you around, kid. Charles Solo, Will Sliney, fuck yes. And then Charles Solo and Phil Noto coming back from Poe Dameron. Oh my god, eulogy for Snap. Oh. oh, wow, this is cool. He's like bouncing around to all four different corners of Star Wars that he's written for. And he's bringing back, oh man, Ramon Rosanna's Giuseppe Kevin Coley. This is going to be so cool. Giuseppe Kevin Coley draws my favorite Vader, my favorite Vader. All right, yeah, this is this is a smorgasbord. I'm gonna just sink my teeth right into it. A long time ago, in a galaxy that really does seem pretty far away from the one we're in now, I got a phone call from Jordan D. White, the editor running the Star Wars comic line for Marvel at the time, asking me to pitch some ideas for a five-issue miniseries. That ended up becoming Lando, a book I made with Alex Believe, Paul Mounts, Joe Caramanga, Heather Antos, and Jordan, plus many amazing folks behind the scenes at Marvel and Lucasfilm. Lando is awesome, by the way. I have it behind me over there on the shelf that first conversation happened in 2014 and now almost eight years later it's been a rare month that hasn't seen at least one star wars comic published with my name on it the, com the comic you're about to read is the 100th script i wrote set in this galaxy far far away i've had more than 100 published at this point but because of the way comics publishing works this was script number 100 i've written stories set in every era of star wars about characters and locations we've all known for decades as well as new ones my collaborators and i created even better, I've gotten to work with brilliant artists who rose to the occasion no matter what craziness I dreamed up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Charles Soule's stories do get a little crazy sometimes. Some of them, many of them, have become close friends of mine. People like Giuseppe Camincoli, Will Sliney, Alex Believe, Steve McNiven, Phil Noto, Ramon Rosanas, Jesus Says, Luke Ross, Stephen Cummings, Marco Cicciato, Angel, Angel Anzueta, and many others. Uh, these folks are legends, and it's been a true honor. The editorial side is just as crucial. No comic just happens. It has to be dragged into existence by a legion of dedicated and insightful and hugely talented people who are not always celebrated to the degree they should be. With that in mind, I also want to spotlight the current editor on the Star Wars line, Mark Pani Panizia, or Panizia, uh, Danny Kazem, and Mikey J. Basso, plus the ones who shepherded so many books through before them, Tom Groneman, uh, Heather Antos, and Jordan D. White. And let's not forget C.B. Sabaluski, uh, Sobolski and Alex Mons Alonso, uh, the Marvel editors-in-chief while I've been doing Star Wars comics, or Michael Seglane, who steers the entire Lucasfilm publishing ship. So many wonderful people are involved in bringing you these stories. That, that's, that's awesome. That's very humble of Charles Soule to, you know, take his, his milestone and use it as an opportunity to celebrate those around him. You know, like, that's, that's such an awesome mindset to have. It's been a spectacular ride, and the fact that I've gotten to tell so many tales is really down to you and people like you who gave my work a try and kept trying and talked it up. Thank you, sincerely. To commemorate this landmark, I'm revisiting some of the titles that comprise those hundred issues, and reuniting with many of the creative teams that helped me make them. Fuck yes. These are stories that either didn't make sense to tell on the runs I did then, or have occurred to me in the years since. And so I hope you'll enjoy these new tales of Anakin and Obi-Wan, Darth Vader, Kylo Ren, and Poe Dameron and Black Squadron. I love going back to these stories. What a wonderful opportunity. And I'm grateful to Marvel, Lucasfilm, and of course, all the incredibly busy artists who came back to help make this issue. Here's to all the stories we told. Here's to all the stories to come. Charles Soule, New York, May 22. 
Oh, that's awesome. Nice. I'm definitely gonna, you know, hold this issue with a little bit more reverence now, because, like, clearly so much thought and effort, and, like, you know, there's a lot of emotions tied up in this. It is... That's a hell of a milestone. A hundred... To write a hundred scripts set in Star Wars, you know? I love it. Coruscant. The Jedi Temple. Why do we do this, Master Kenobi? This, my Padawan? I'm not sure I understand your question. Lightsabers. Instant flashbacks to Kenobi. Why are lightsabers the weapon of the Jedi and nothing else? Don't get me wrong, they're incredible. But there are other weapons we could use, right? What were you thinking, Anakin? Well... Our sabers are powered by kyber crystals and the energy inside them. But energy can power anything, right? So why don't we have kyber spears or kyber blasters even? I was thinking about it. I bet I could build a... I see. Wait. Nice, just yanks it from his hand. When I was a Padawan, I came up with the idea of two short-bladed sabers, each attached to a thin chain. Wait, what? Master, that sounds amazing. Oh, my bad. It's actually a, a larger... I missed half of that. I was thinking about it, and I bet I could build a... Let me guess. A weapon no one's ever seen. Something that would really set you apart from the other Padawans. Well, it wouldn't be for me. It would be for the Order. To make us more powerful. Now I see. Let me tell you something, Anakin. When I was a Padawan... I came up with the idea of two short-bladed sabers, each attached to a thin chain. Master, that sounds amazing. I agree. I would have looked very impressive, assuming I didn't chop my foot off trying to use it. I suggested it to Qui-Gon, and he told me what I'm about to tell you. Here we go, the tough love. Yeah, nunchuck saber sounds amazing. I'm just imagining young Obi-Wan with one of those. It is about how we wish to be seen, Anakin. And that is and how that ties into the central mission of the Jedi Order. We do, not, we do not want to be powerful. We wish to stand tall against the dark. Our tools reflect that Hello goal, there. especially our chosen weapon. We all wield the same one with minor variations, the lightsaber. We could make kyber bombs or blasters. Indeed, it's been tried. There are a few weapons, there are a few weapons like that in the sealed archives. Yep, Jocasta knew has a kyber rifle in there. But anyone can fire a blaster. Very few can safely and skillfully wield a lightsaber. Everyone in the galaxy knows this to be true. We want our opponents to know that we use a weapon that requires intention, training, precision, and choice. The lightsaber symbolizes the care with which we approach our gifts through the Force, and the care with which we wield them. It reminds others that while we could do more, we very purposefully do not. Take it, my Padawan. I like it. That's awesome. Man, Charles Soule gets Star Wars so good. That is such a thing that Obi-Wan would say. Like, it's not about how badass you are. It's communicating to everyone around you that you have chosen a path that requires skill and requires precision. And you don't need to show off because just the very fact that a lightsaber is the weapon you've chosen means you are clearly too skilled to be messed with. Take it, my Padawan. Hello there, Kiniston. Din's best guard, Jake. This weapon is your life, Dr. Holocron. Exactly. Kyber rifle, does it just have unlimited ammo, or how would you reload it? Um, I, I will... I think it just draws an energy pulse out of the crystal and shoots that, and just continually does that. So you wouldn't need to reload it unless your crystal somehow ran out of energy. I'm also thinking about Ezra Bridger's little staple gun thing. That was able to shoot a little kyber bolt. Take it, my Padawan. We choose a weapon with limitations, with difficulties. You cannot use a lightsaber to destroy a city or a planet. Every death or injury it inflicts must be precisely chosen. The lightsaber tells the galaxy that the Jedi are not destroyers. We are protectors. But the Sith use them as well. True. The Sith would give you their reasons, I'm sure. 
But ultimately, I believe they use lightsabers because they like to think that anything the Jedi can do, they can do better. They are, of course, wrong. Oh my god. Full on Jesus mullet status right here. I love it. Look at that. Look at that amazing hairdo. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> mullet Obi-Wan is my favorite Obi-Wan. Attack of the Clones era. And now, my apprentice, let's go again. The end. Oh, these are great. They're short little vignettes, but like, ah. I enjoyed Anakin and Obi-Wan as a comic series so much, and this was such a nice little, just like a taste, like a dessert, you know? That's great. And it was, it really is evocative of the, uh, the flashback sequence in Kenobi when they were having their, when they were having their sparring session in the Jedi Temple. Yeah, this is the infamous hairstyle that grandmas worship. Yes, exactly. <laughs> God, he looks so good. He looks like he drives a van and goes to community college. And I'm, I'm here for it. All right. What's next? Coruscant, the works district. Oh! <laughs> what a change. Lord Vader. Fight me. <gasps> oh, shit. I'm not ready for this, man. This is awesome. Immediately, immediately transported to Giuseppe Camincoli land. Oh my god. How big is it? Okay, it's... Yeah, that's fine. I'll stretch it to like here. <laughs> Just effortlessly disarmed. You fight like a Jedi. You fight as if this were your only weapon. It is not. The Sith's weapon is not the lightsaber. It is the dark side of the Force. And the dark side touches everything. Awesome. This is such a nice little antithesis to what Anakin and Obi-Wan were just discussing. Everything's amazing. The saber is merely a symbol. A great flame signifying the great blaze of the dark side. The inferno that consumes all who come against it. God, Palpatine looks so just terrifyingly unhinged with his eye just open like that. Palpatine looks... In the fight me panel, let me go back to it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this is one of my favorite. He looks just, that's not Palpatine. This is a panel of Sidious. He just, like, that's who we're looking at right here. Fully unmasked, just with, like, his Sith emblem on his cloak, like, in full display. Like, this is Darth Sidious right here. Look at that grin. Oh, that's son of a bantha. Palpatine's so good. The Sith's weapon is not the lightsaber. It is the dark side of the Force. And the dark side touches everything. The saber is merely a symbol. A flame signifying the great blaze of the dark side. The inferno that consumes all who come against it. All. <laughs> that was an amazing monologue. And yes, Palps fully looks like lasagna right now. <laughs> Just absolute subservience. To wield as much power as Vader does. To be the chosen one and still just kneel, you know? I understand my master. Kneel, kneel before lasagna face. Oh, this was awesome. These are so fun. This is like a great little trip down memory lane of all of Charles Soule's best lines. Steadfast. Resurgence class First Order Star Destroyer. Flagship of Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. Oh. Okay. We've arrived at Crate, Supreme Leader. Do you think I can't see that? Prepare my shuttle. 
That's not Hux. Okay. And that might be Pride? That might be Price? I'm not sure. Oh, okay. After... After it all went down. What is he doing? Do you want to ask him? Da! Is just is he just raging down here? Okay. Elfrona. Oh, sick! Nice. From um, Rise of Kylo Ren, former outpost of the Jedi Order. What are you looking for? A ghost. This is where we first met you, in Skywalker. This place has been dead a long time, Kylo. But I don't sense no ghosts. Maybe the ghost of your pride, Vikril. This was the first place I beat you, too. Let's go. I have another place to look. Interesting. Is he searching for Skywalker? Nice. Nice. Okay, cool. This is this is getting cool. This is where, um... This is where Mando dropped off Grogu. Where are you? I can feel you. I know you're watching me. Show yourself, you coward! No more tricks, Skywalker! Just the reckoning I deserve! Interesting. The reckoning I deserve. Is that a little bit of guilt creeping in there? You're a fool. Awesome, and this is where Luke and Grogu sat and had their conversation. It was like totally right over here. Supreme Leader, did you find what you, uh, bombard this location from orbit? All batteries. What? I don't. You have my orders, General Hux. Just, just wipe it clean. He doesn't even want to think about this place existing anymore. The memories are too painful. You're not even going to watch? Why would I? There's nothing here. I like this one. This one was, was suitably moody for Kylo Ren. And we got to see, like, some synergy between the sequels and the new, like, Mandoverse as well, with him standing in this location. Like, that's very cool. Um, they have not labeled it Osis. No, it's not. It's... Elfrona, but that doesn't mean that Osis doesn't exist, okay? We, it's a big galaxy out there. We can have an Elfrona and an Osis, all right? But, um, yeah, no. Loki, I really love the Jedi Library at Osis, so I hope that we get to see that at some point. It's such a cool location. You're not even going to watch? Why would I? There's nothing here. End. Hell yeah. Okay, and then the last one was um, was a Poe Dameron one, I think, right? The new reference book says that it is Osis? That, oh, interesting. Okay. That Elfrona is literally Osis, or it's like in the Osis system, or it's the moon of Osis? Like, are we, are we talking a direct rename? I'm going to have to look that up, actually. Shadow of the Sith also says that it's Osis, so I'm wondering why it says Elfrona there. No, Osis is totally in Shadow of the Sith. It's also in the Old Republic, but in um, the, 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 this is continuity being created between this and the rise of Kylo Ren, where it was Elfrona, is what they called it. So this is Elfrona. I think it's a separate location to Osis. I don't think it's the same location. Silvio, I'm, I'm saying I think that there's two temples. There's a temple on Osis, and there's a temple on Elfrona. And the Knights of Ren happens to go to the Elfrona one twice. Um, I don't know. I will be tweeting Charles Soul later today. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. The Battle of Exegol. 35 ABY. Oh, God. we got to watch Snap Wexley die again. The death of Snap Wexley. Ah! You were a real one. We are Black Squadron. We were once more than this, but this is what we are today. Kare Kun, Jessica Pava, Sir Linda Javos, and I'm Poe Dameron. We lost three pilots on the way to this moment. Laula Lampar, Adi Muva, and most recently, Major Temin Wexley. We called him Snap. 
He's who we're here for today. Oh, gods. It's okay, Carrie. It's okay. This is going to be really sad. I know it's hard to be feeling the way we are while everyone's celebrating down there. But we won a huge battle today. For ourselves and for the galaxy. And Snap was a big part of the reason we did win. And not just today. He fought at the Battle of Jakku that ended the Empire, and the Battle of Exegol that ended the First Order. And in between, a hundred other fights. He was always right there, doing whatever needed to be done. When you're out there, flying through hell, just trying to survive, nothing matters more than knowing the pilot on your wing has your back. Nothing. With Snap, it was never a question. Not once. Every time I needed him, he was there. To Snap Wexley. Best wingman I ever had. I loved my husband so much. It's hard to think of being alone again. When you found the person who make, never makes you feel alone, no matter how far away they are, it's... It's just hard. You're not alone, Kari. I appreciate that, Sir Linda. Thank you. But it's not the same, and pretending it is lessens what Snap meant to me. He rigged my test results so I could be a pilot. I didn't score high enough on the live fire tests, but Snap knew I'd get there with some extra time and focus. He pulled some strings, and then he gave me that time and focus himself. If not for that, I... I wouldn't have this life. I wouldn't have done the things I've done. All because he believed in me. I've never told anyone that before. I didn't know Snap as long as you or all did. Or as well. But I was a reporter before the war. Still am. And so I was trained to observe people and then encapsulate them in a few specific details. For Snap, it was his laugh, his generosity, his ingenuity, his bravery. I could write a 10,000 word piece in the life of Snap Wexley, but really, I only needed five. He was a good man. What's that? It's the code for the crazy droid he built when he was a kid. Mr. Bones. Mr. Bones? Oh, right, of course. That thing saved my life back when we were fighting Terex. Never seen anything like it. Amazing. He sure was, Poe. He sure was. Just gonna destroy the code? Oh. General Dameron, I'm sorry to interrupt. We have some after-action reports we were hoping you could review. Not tonight. It can wait. Yeah, Snap deserves this Deserves this moment. Maybe we'll all fly together again. Or maybe our fighting days are done. But whatever happens, we'll never stop remembering who we were and who we are. Here's to Snap Wexley. Here's to Black Squadron. Here's to all the stories we told. And to the stories yet to come. Nice. I see what you did there, Charles. Cool. Well, that was a very sobering story to end it on. Poor Snap. But that was an awesome issue. That was so cool. Yeah, Snap was absolutely the Battle of Jakku. He was a real one, man. Um, next, Star Wars 26. Looking like it's going to be great. I love this retro uh, this retro style of the cover here. Charles Soule just gets Star Wars. He just really understands how to make, how to make it seem authentic. Both the stories and the dialogue itself. And I don't know. I'm just... Yeah, that was great. I thoroughly enjoyed all, all enjoyed all four of those issues and getting all of those artists coming back just to do those little segments. Yeah, that was a real treat. That was really cool. Alrighty. Now we've got something a little different. Star Wars Darth Vader 25 by Greg Pak and Raphael Ienko. No calm before the storm. Ochi, Sabe. This is gonna be good. Completely agree. Uh... Din's best guard, Jarl Soul, never misses. No calm before the storm. After listening to the plight of Kitster and Wald's community, Darth Vader and Sabe launched an attack against the corrupt governor working with Crimson Dawn. During the battle, Ochi of Bestoon raced in to join the fight, but in the chaos, allowed the governor to escape. God damn it, Ochi! <laughs> now an enraged Darth Vader has taken Ochi's speeder and is pursuing the governor on his own. You want something done right? You gotta do it yourself. Definitely don't get Ochi to do it. Gabrador 3. No one's following us. You see, Governor Tontaza? 
Crimson Dawn always delivers. I recommend you hold off on bragging until... Correction, someone's following us. That's not just someone. Activate your ammo mag. Yes, Governor. Ah, this looks fun. Ah, this is fun. I don't see anyone surviving that. <laughs> this ridiculous weapon enhancement. This is awesome. Unless he happens to be Darth Vader. Just completely deflects it. Amazing. Vader? We're being chased by Vader? Stay focused. That droid won't last long, and that was the last power capsule I had on me. So please tell me the next step in this extraction is better than the first. All right, all right. Last I heard, Vader can't fly. Ha! All right, we're rushing off to escape. I know these are just like the private security forces of the governor, but I'm seeing some distinctly T-shaped visors, and I'm almost getting like a Delta, a Delta vibe from them. I didn't pick this fight, but I'll be ready for him soon. On a battlefield, I choose. Now let's go. Ah, you missed him, Vader. Or did he? Oh shit, he's gonna pull what he pulled in Kenobi. We're, we're being held back. Ah, it's him. Pull yourselves together. You've got twin destroyer ion engines. Use them. You see, everyone whispers his name in fear, but there are more powerful things in the galaxy than any of us, even him. What, do you like have stock in ion engines or something? They're not that strong. <laughs> uh, he's, he's damaging the circuitry. How? Because he's Vader, that's how. Shut up and keep flying. Even if you're able to escape, like, he's already completely destroyed the morale of everyone on your team. There's no way you're getting out of this thing. I... I told you Crimson Dawn always delivers. Pfft, just get me to my destination. So I can prepare for the real battle. <laughs> I love this posture. It's like sad Vader walking back to his... Walking back, his mom's picking him up. No, I didn't get to kill them. The shuttle's found Vader. But now he's heading to the governor's flagship. Without us? Sabe, call the colony. We need a transport of our own. Calm down, Ochi. If Vader wanted us to join him, he'd have commanded it. We've got our own job to do now. Zed, Ira, what have you found? As I suspected, this, th this is the facility the governor used to process the energy she harvested from the planet. I already told you that. The question is the question is what she's using to harvest the energy. They never revealed that part of it to us. Well, if you'll give me a moment, Dr. Ira, I should be able to access the data bank that contains the relevant information. Fine, you do that. I'm gonna go find a transport. No, Ochi. We're going to stop this once and for all, which means you're going to stay right here and follow orders finger on the trigger. She's not messing around. Oh, it's like this? I'm a master assassin, kids. I could kill you all in seven seconds. Eh, six. And what are you doing obeying this rebel sympathizer anyway? Don't you know what's good for you? Sabe has been given the title of Lieutenant Commander. She outranks all of us. By order of Lord Vader himself. Nice. Take that, Ochi. Shut up. <laughs> In the name of the Emperor, Lord Vader will board your ship and apprehend your governor, who has been exposed as a traitor to the Galactic Empire. This... this doesn't make any sense. Governor Tantaza has always served with, If you lay down your weapons, you may live. If you defend your governor, you will die. Was that fun? Incredibly. Next time I get to do it. Huh? <laughs> These fucking officers. This is great. I'm loving how many B1s are being incorporated into the security team here. Oh, man. <sighs> oh, God. This page is amazing. 
Yeah, we're getting... Uh, Raphael Yenko is just killing it with the artwork this week. This is next level. Just grisly montage of red death. He follows Vader everywhere he goes. <laughs> Your governor. Where is she? <laughs> Lord Vader, we are no match for you today. But when the governor completes her mission, I feel certain this misunderstanding can be cleared up. I respectfully recommend that you reconsider this hostile stance. Open a channel to my command ship. Beep. Lord Vader, this is Admiral Piet standing by for your orders. Lock onto the source of this transmission. Done, my lord. This is Governor Tontaza's flagship. If I do not countermand this order within two hours, destroy it. By your command, Lord Vader. Now, where is the governor? Okay, is self-preservation going to win out? Are these, are they going to give up the location? Or are they that loyal they're gonna actually going to die for Governor Tontaza? Sabe! Kitster, what are you doing here? There's a storm rolling in. We've got to get you out of here. We can't leave yet. But... The governor's trying to drain the living energy from this planet. What? What? <laughs> Zed's trying to find the technology that she's using to... I found it. Where? There. Great. The great big crackling sky lightning monster. Oh, perfect. Very convenient to work with. Feels like something out of out of the Loki series, doesn't it? Look, let's just wait for the storm to blow over and then kill this governor or whatever. The storm's not blowing over. What are you talking about? The governor's making that storm, isn't she, Zed? That is my best assessment of the situation. A naturally generated sandstorm would be moving with the wind currents. This one's moving against them. The governor's draining this planet even as we speak. Kitster. You find whatever speeders you can and get the conscripts back to the settlement. No. You might need us to dismantle whatever you find out there. You could all get killed if you try this. All right. You hunker down here, Ira. I'll go with Sabe and come back for, what you, for you when we figure out what we need. Pretty sure we'll all die if we don't. But especially if you do. So we might as well all take cover and hope for... Come on, Ochi. Gah. <laughs> Look at his little... His little stance. Oh, Ochi. He'll be the death of me. And they're all off. This is ridiculous. You can't see a thing. There. What the? Oh, that's so sick. Look, it's just on caterpillar tracks. It's just like a massive storm-creating machine. Kind of reminds me of Tartakovsky's Clone Wars, um, the big old ground and pound machine on the planet that makes Windu battles. The ground pounder. I don't know what else to call it. But um, that's awesome. This is totally like a, just a little bit of a, a nod to that, I, I feel like. What the? Come on, Sabe. What can you do to stop that? I, I, I don't know, but... Ah! Kitster! No! You did not just fucking kill Kitster! Oh, Greg Pack, we're gonna have words. Kitster! We gotta get out of here! No! We can't- Come on, we have to find Kitster! It's too late for him, Sabe! I'm not gonna- Whoa, shit! Ochi! What? <laughs> wow. So sad. Now can we go? <laughs> oh... God, fuck off, Ochi, you're the worst. That was hilarious. That was a great moment, though. Whoop. Wow. So sad. Now can we go? <laughs> <laughs> There's some kind of facility down there where they said the governor is, my lord. But if we get any closer, we'll be pulled into that vortex. Keep going. My lord, the ship won't survive the... Do it. Yes, my lord. <laughs> Oh, it's cracking the view screen and everything. We're losing hull integrity. We're going to... Nice. He's just... He's just holding it all together. This is amazing. Well, we're stabilizing. This sand will not stop us. Keep going. 
Yes, my... <laughs> Vader will be damned before he lets Sand defeat him at any step of this journey. Vader! <sighs> nice. His, his literal eye roll when Sabe gets yeeted out of there, but like... If Waifu Vader's d shuttle gets a little damaged, oh, she's suddenly very concerned. My lord! Where is Sabe? She's... She's in the storm. I, I did everything I could, but she's... She's gone, Lord Vader. We just need to hunker down for a bit and call the Executor for extraction. It's too late for that. This storm will kill us all. Where are your ships? The governor confiscated everything that could fly, and our speeders have all been wrecked. The only thing left is Kitster's old racer. <gasps> no, is Vader going to fly the... Oh, this is going to be cool. But no no one could ever drive that but him. And I'm so sad that Kitster just died, man. That's brutal. We shall see. <laughs> now this is pod racing. Are you kidding me? Oh, little Annie's going to fly Kitster's racer to be continued. Oh, I want more. Oh, this is... This is... This is pretty silly. This is some silly nonsense, but I'm loving it. This is great. Vader. They have engineered a situation where Vader has to ride the uh, the saber, uh, the speeder that Kitster and Wald have built together. I, I hope they reverse this. I hope it turns out that Kitster is not, in fact, dead, because that's really sad, man. Kitster never deserved to, to go out like this. Not to mention Sabe. Well, if one of them survived, then they both survived. But, like, that storm is pretty damn gnarly. I guess we'll find out next issue. Now, this is, this is great. Now, this is pod racing. I cannot wait for Vader 26. Oh, that's dirty. The disrespect. He's just covered in sand. <laughs> Do not let this sand stop us. Amazing. Uh, okay, this has been a great issue. I really have enjoyed uh, Vader 26. This was cool. All right, on to the next one. Well, Vader will have some flashbacks to his younger days. I hope so. I hope we get a little bit more Anakin action in there. <laughs> highway to the Danger Zone. I'm just going to imagine that playing in the background of him just flying down the highway. <laughs> All right. And now for our third and final comic of the stream today. Han Solo and Chewbacca, issue number four. What up, Black Kersantin? This feels like a Phil Noto cover, and it is. Love it. <laughs> I love how very much like Han Solo like it, it's very clear that like two seconds ago he had no idea that Black K was there and now he's like huh? it's like the moment before he properly reacts <laughs> Han Solo and Chewbacca The Crystal Run Part 4 it is a golden age of criminal enterprise with the evil galactic empire preoccupied with bringing the galaxy under its thumb Scoundrels and thieves are free to ply their illegal trade with abandon. The vile gangster Jabba the Hutt has hired Han Solo, Chewbacca, and Greedo to steal an urn containing the ashes of his arch-rival. With the help of the man claiming to be Han's father, they have located the urn on the remote world of Antilon. Han and his father were about to abscond with the item when they were attacked by the bounty hunter Kersant. I'm here for it. Written by Mark Guggenheim, David Messina is the artist. Let's go. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those, is it? No, my love, come back. Do this from 22 pages, man. It's like, don't make me kill you. I love that Black K is still using a uh, a Wookiee style ship, like a like a, a ship that was styled from. You know, Kashyyyk technology. 
even though we know that he's been shunned from, you know, larger Wookiee society. He still adheres to some of the tenets, maybe in just an aesthetic way. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Nice. This is like Django versus Obi-Wan in the rain. He gets him with the tracker. I love it. Come on, you gotta nurse him back to health. <laughs> I don't believe I ever have, Jake. No. I don't believe I ever have made so many growl noises. <laughs> Damn. That stun blast really did a number on me. Where's Han? For that matter, do you see the urn? We found it back there, and there's gonna be ten different kinds of trouble if we don't get it. Take it easy. Besides, you're wasting your breath. I don't speak Shriwook. That's a flight trajectory. How did... Are you tracking that ship somehow? I don't know what hrrr means, but I'm guessing it's something like yes. <laughs> what, you got into a firefight with whoever shot me and made off with Han? Oh, well, seems like you understand Shriwick pretty well all of a sudden. And planted a tracker on his ship, I'm guessing. <laughs> nice going. And speaking of, where are we going? Molotanka, planetoid. Yeah, yeah, this tracks. The doorman in Augustus Graves' building said he was vacationing at Monotanka. As seen in issue number two. Bzzz. Hmm, if we're gonna get hand back, I think I'm gonna need a bigger, a bigger uh, blaster. Ooh. I don't know what happened. I, I thought I was doing better. I love it. His blaster ends up getting left behind on the Falcon and is totally the one that Han eventually gives to Rey. That's a great connection. I'll be all right in a bit. He's like, wait right here. What? You want me to stay? If that means feel better, thanks. Good luck. And try not to get yourself killed. Come on, Chewie. I believe in you. Not bad, right? Cushy gig, nice weather. Yeah, but it's not like Graves is paying us all that much. Fair point. What the? Shove it! Oh my god, look at the silhouette. This is amazing. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? That all depends. On what? And whether you're thinking we're not paid enough to fight a Wookiee. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm thinking. He's like, yeah, smart idiots. That's amazing. I'm only going to ask one more time, Solo. Just one more time? And here I was enjoying the previous 20 times so much. Just one more time. Where is the urn? I told you, it's back on Antalon. I dropped it when tall, dark, and shaggy, your Wookiee picked me up by my neck. So if you want it, go back there and leave me alone. <laughs> what in the seven blazes? Chewy? Uh-oh. Whoa, what do you mean? What's happening? You've never seen a Wookiee death duel? Well, get ready. Because you're about to. Let's fucking go! Amazing. Just Clash of the Titans right here. This is amazing. 
<laughs> Brass knuckles and everything. <laughs> there, just get them all out now and just. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Bleep. Oh, he's got a thermal dent. He's not playing. How I've missed you. I meant the blaster, but yeah, you you too, buddy. Thanks for the hospitality, Mr. Graves. You have yourself a good day now. Ah! Oh yeah, nothing makes a fella feel like better than like a rescue. Yeah, I hear it. How's far as the Falcon? What? You couldn't have parked it farther away? No, I'm not complaining. Well, maybe a little bit. Man, Santi... Chrysanthemum is so fucking tough, he survived that in, a thermal detonator literally point-blank range, and it just knocked him back. Like, that would have killed a human for sure. Well, maybe a little. Come on, Chewie. How can you be slower? Your legs are longer. <laughs> yeah, I know they're shooting at us. We're here? Wait. What do you mean he's gone? Uh, what? Where's the falcon? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. Okay, hopefully, hopefully they're going to come and rescue him. I don't know. That was awesome. That was hilarious. It was, it was very much one of those. <laughs> man. Oh, uh, not enough. I, I bring this on myself, all right? When Mark wrote this, he was not thinking about some idiot on stream, on a stream trying to, like, read it out loud and vocalize that many Wookiee growls in a row. That's completely my own bad. Um, yeah, that was hilarious. The, God, the shit that I get myself into, man. <laughs> Three excellent issues today. I think Star Wars 25 kind of stands apart just because it's, it's kind of momentous in that it's Charles Soule's 100th script, but also just getting it. It was such a treat getting four little glimpses back backward into like different lines that he's done that we all love so much. Anakin and Obi-Wan, Vader, you know. Um, you know, that was really, really cool. And then also um, Vader itself, Vader 25, was awesome. It was really cool. We even got a little sand reference in there. Ochi being a dick, um, potentially the death of Kitster, which is kind of uh, kind of a momentous thing. I'm I got my fingers crossed that in fact he is gonna pull through somehow because I don't know why you feel the need to just do Kitster dirty like that. Come on, he was minding his own business, building a racer with Wald. Oh, that's gonna be sick. It's gonna be some silly fun um, next issue. I, this is the kind of cheesiness that I think Star Wars is doing really well. There's like all different kinds of campiness, but like. When you have these little references, and it's like Vader's like, I'm still a tough badass, and I, I service the evil goals of the Sith. But this racer's pretty wizard, and I'm definitely gonna ride it as fast as I can. Like, that's, that's acceptable, you know? Cool. That was awesome. Thank you so much for watching Comics with Katarn, guys. If you only joined in the, caught the tail end of the stream, and you missed Star Wars 25, or perhaps Darth Vader 25, don't worry, you can catch the replay coming on YouTube. I'll be posting it shortly. Um, thanks again, and as always, may the Force be with you.